Hi guys, it's me Tara. I am back today with another fabulous Mail Art Monday tutorial. So let me show you what we're going to make today. We've got this lovely envelope here. I'm feeling a little springy. This is partly in the, um, inspired by a design that Dee Dee had done with these, oh my gosh, so awesome art journal triangles. So I love these and I wanted to use them. I love them with the green. So I went a little springy. I've got this fabulous caterpillar. This is, of course, an A2 envelope. So let's get started. I just want to grab a plain A2. Let's place it here. So this one, we're going to kind of work back to front. We're going to start by adding our background. I've got a couple different greens here. I've got Distress Ink in Mode Lawn. Just grab some Memento Pear Tart. And I've got the Kaleida color here in Caribbean Sea, and I'm going to use the very first green in it. You can add yellows, you can do this in any color that you really want. Sorry that takes coming out of focus, I don't know why. So let's get started. I'm going to start by laying a base of green ink down. I've just got a sponge here, as well as my sponge tool. So we're just going to go back and forth. Let's start with the Memento in Pear Tart. And I'm going to leave this section here for the address a little light and then go darker around the outside. And this is kind of a nice, quick, easy, good for anybody envelope. If you're, depending on if you just need to send a birthday card or hello, really doesn't have a theme. So it's kind of good. It's not necessarily feminine or masculine, so it really is good for anybody. Try not to hopefully shake the camera too much as I'm working. I tried setting up my tripod a little differently today to see if this would work any better. Because usually I have to set it up at an angle and then I'm kind of working crooked. So I'm trying to work a little easier. All right, my sponge is a little dried out, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to the Kaleida color. I haven't used the other one in a while and I know this one's a little juicier. There we go. That one goes on a little better. And I want these inks to be on pretty heavily. It's up to you on how much color you want. And it doesn't have to look pretty at this point. Let me show you guys. It looks a little crazy. That's okay. We don't mind a little crazy every now and again. I'll try to put that back on so you guys can see. And I am doing this upside down. I just find it easier when I go to upload the video to work this way. It just works faster for me. I actually want it this way. So with the ink that's left over, I'm just going to put a light coating in the space where the address is going to go. And then I can continue to make it heavy everywhere else. Keep that in. And remember where your postage stamp is going to go. If you're going to put it in the direct right hand corner, you don't have to go as heavy. Sometimes I move the postage stamp. I might put it beside the arrows. It just kind of depends. There's no set rule that you really have to have it up there. I've sent them in a variety of places on the envelopes and they've all gone through the post without any problems. So don't worry. It doesn't matter also how much stuff you have on here. I apologize. Let's just turn that off. As long as they can clearly read the address, it will still go through the mail. Okay, let's go with that. My sponge is falling apart. So there's kind of a nice base, it's a little splotted. We're going to use this one and I'm going to grab my mode lawn to just kind of even out the texture of that ink now. This also gives you a variety of colors. If you wanted to do this all in one color, you can, like I said. You can just start darker on the edges and work your way in. I don't know, I just like using a bunch for some reason. And usually I kind of do it in sections. Today I'm just kind of going all over, but sometimes I'll do dark in one section and then do light and then go back to dark. I tend to do darker on the edges just so it doesn't interfere with my address block if I forget. But it's up to you, it's up to your preference. All right, so let's stay with that. Now we are going to go ahead and stamp our edging. For that, I used two different 
uh, texture stamps that are the stitching from Viva and this one here you'll see on my block. So I used both the stitching stamps. I'm going to start with some black archival ink and we're going to stamp those around the edges. Now this you don't have to be too neat with, you just kind of wing it. I'm a wing it kind of person so you're just going to go, it doesn't matter if it goes off the envelope, which you'll see there, I kind of went off. And I didn't re, you'll notice I did not re-ink this for that second stamp because we want a couple to go into the background of our envelope. So same thing on this side. Okay, so there you have it. There's the first ones. And let's add two more of this one to the sides. So let's see. Let's go here. And notice I'm not doing really very perfect. I'm just going to kind of crisscross it. I want it to be kind of sporadic as if I did a messy sewing job on the sewing machine. So let's take that off. I'm going to go to the other stitching stamp that I have. It's got some of the zigzags in it. I'm going to ink it up with that same black archival ink. And now I'm going to fill in the side. And you'll see how those just really nicely blend together. And I'm going to do the same thing around all the other edges. And yes, I get ink everywhere when I do this. Which is why I work on the nonstick craft mat. And I do have that foam underneath if you haven't watched the videos before. I just use fun foam. That's how I'm able to use these stamps unmounted. I keep them unmounted for storage. And I've had a couple people ask, I'm going to do a video just on storage to show you guys. I use these four by six photo containers and I keep all my unmounted stamps in there. And I just find it easier. I can keep a ton of stamps this way and they don't take up any room and I have very nice containers to store them in. And they're all stored by theme. And I've got two giant boxes of these. So now that we have that done, we're going to add our triangles. So just a reminder, we're going to add these pieces on the side. And that same, I'm going to use the black archival ink for everything, so I probably won't tell you guys that every time. You can use whatever ink you want. Because we're not coloring this with markers or anything, whatever black ink is your favorite, it doesn't matter if it's water-based, oil-based, it's up to you. As long as you have something juicy enough to stamp and stamp nice and dark. That's usually my biggest problem when I get a stamp is that they don't stamp dark enough because sometimes I forget to re-ink re my inks. So I really like a nice dark ink. And my archival right now was the most recently refilled. So I have this, I have Memento, which I always use when I'm coloring with any alcohol-based markers. And then I've got the Tim Holtz ink, of course. I've got Versifying, which is Versifying is another love of mine. It usually stamps nice and dark. So just whatever you have. If you have some other brand, use it. They are all wonderful. It's just finding what works best for you that you like. Now that we've got that, we're going to stamp our super fun caterpillar. I love this guy. He is so cute. We're going to stamp him right across the bottom. So he's just kind of crawling over like he took a bite out of this triangle. Let's get him all inked up here. Go. And just set him on there. Isn't that perfect? And last, to just complete it as an envelope. I you don't have to have this, it's not necessary. And if you wanted, if you're really worried, some people worry about the color on the background that it won't go through the post. If you're really worried, you can use like a plain white address label. Like here's those sticker labels, they make them in different sizes. You could stick that down on there too. I'm going to use the super fun Deliver 2 though. And let's line it up right about there. Now, the last step to make this kind of complete and comprehensive, you'll notice this kind of looks just a little plain like it's missing something, versus this one is just grabs your eye. We're going to add our dots. For that, I use Punchinella. If you have one of the stencils, you can use that, whatever you want. 
this is just what I happen to have. So we'll just lay that down. You don't have to be precise with this at all. We're going to use the Mowed Lawn Distress Ink. I don't know if that came up on camera. There we go. I think I might have used turquoise on the very first one from that Kaleida color one. Just one of those. I'm not for sure. You just want something that's going to give a hint of color but not overly stand out. It just draws the eye in. As you can see, that's just really pulling your eye in already. And if you want to do two colors, as a matter of fact, I'll do that just to show you guys. Let's see what I did with the Kaleida color here. I'm going to grab the Kaleida color. Let's pick, let's do the second color. If you want to do two colors, if you want to do five colors, if you want to do ten colors, don't let this be a have to. You can pick anything you want and it'll blend right in. As you can see, that color just... Working in the same color family, I think works a little better for me. Here, this one, I just picked up another color of that turquoise from that Kaleida pack. And you can see they all go really smoothly together. And if you're not sure, sets like the Kaleida colors with the same color families are wonderful because they make the decision process very easy. I know some people really have a challenge with mixing colors and blending. You don't have to think about it, you don't have to worry about it then. And let's add a little more over here. I want a little bit of darker color right here. Okay, so there you guys can see. It was quick, easy. It doesn't require a lot of time. If you wanted to go more all out, you can have one of the, let's see here, I'll show you the caterpillars that's hanging from the cocoon, which would be super cute. Which you could stamp coming down from here to add a little bit more. You could add butterflies. There are so many ways you guys can go with this. You can use this in a different color scheme. So you have somebody that loves purple or blue or orange. Let your imagination go to work for you. Hop over to Viva Las Vegas Stamps, their blog. You can leave a comment on this. Tell me what you would like to see. I'll try to do some new upcoming tutorials. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks. Have a great day.